Welcome to True Crime with Strategic Eyes. Strategic back again. What's going on, guys? So I did a members and Patreon exclusive where we kind of reacted to the docket's playing of the audio interview between Stephen Stearns and Kissimmee Police Detectives. Um, we did that for the members and for the Patreon. Go check it out on our Patreon. For the members, it's white shielding up. So if you're not on those levels, you won't be able to see it. And for the Patreon, it's for everybody who's over there and who's a part of the Patreon. I just did a little bit, like 30 minutes of it, kind of reacting to it. And I said to myself, you know what? I'll come out, I'll come back. And I do a more in-depth and thorough reaction to the interview when it was posted somewhere else, such as Plunder, et cetera, where it didn't have the docket's commentary. You know, I like to respect other content creators by not, when, it, when avoidable, I like to not react to videos and audio that they're being transformative in, unless, of course, I'm literally reacting to that creator instead of the content that they're reacting to. If that makes any sense to you guys. But anyway, all that just went crashing down, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why it came crashing down is that the docket posted on his community tab that Chris Stearns has made a privacy complaint against his channel with YouTube. And we don't want that kind of smoke here on a Strategic Eyes show. I don't know how that's going to play out for the docket. Hopefully, um, YouTube recognizes that this is public information and we are simply reporting um, and, and analyzing and reacting to um, information that's readily available to us um, and trying to bring awareness to a young girl who was so viciously um, taken away from us and tortured throughout her life. Um, but what I'm going to do is I listen to it and I do remember the things that were said and I want to just react to it and tell you guys what was said and how I feel about it. And I got to say this before I get started. I get that Stephen Stearns is a son and that he has parents that loves him. And I also understand that the Stearns, which include um, Chris and Deborah, are under a lot of pressure. These are people who, by all accounts, seem like they were just quiet, typical suburban Americans just living their life. And now because of the actions of their son, they have been thrusted into the national spotlight. And not only are their names out there, their address out there, their business interests out there, et cetera, these are things that could literally destroy people's lives. It's terrible that some people will, you know, maybe try and get them to lose business. I'm not a fan of that. I'd never agree with that, even though I have my issues with the Stearns and have vocalized those issues on this channel and take back nothing. But I don't believe that people should go out there and really try and harass people on a personal level. And I think that this is what this family is experiencing. So I get that. I get the affinity that one would have for their own child and the defensiveness that would come with that to want to protect that child and support that child to the best of their abilities. And also get the pressure that they're under. But we all know. Chris Stearns knows it because he's acknowledged it in his interviews with police. Deborah Stearns knows it. We all know that what Stephen Stern did was monstrous. We know what he did was monstrous. And it doesn't help your case when you talk to the police and you minimize the monstrosity of what your son did. And it doesn't help your case when you go out there and you're trying to get people's videos taken down, you know, through YouTube, et cetera. It makes you more into a villain then I'm sorry to say you already appear to be. And that's not us that's doing that. That's you doing that. And when you listen to the video that the doctor posted and you listen to what I believe in my opinion, just my opinion, to be blatant lies that were said by Chris Stearns to try and implicate Jen Soto in either possessing CSAM or the production of CSAM, that's just disgusting. And that's one of the things that came out. One of the things that came out, Chris Stearns has a conversation with the detective, one of the lead detectives, and he says, listen, when I was in the car with Jen Soto, 
Man, he got me defending Jen Soto. Wow. He said, when I was in the car with Jen Soto, she showed me. Mind you, he never spoke about this before. Now he's talking about it. She showed me a video of Maddie, and then I think they redacted it, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But based off of the follow-up statements and what the detective said, clearly Chris Stearns, in my opinion, said that it was a piece of CSAM. It was Maddie in a compromising position or somebody doing something to Maddie. And he said, well, she had that on her phone. Well, that's just not true, ladies and gentlemen, because the detective came back and said, we examined her phone and she had no evidence of criminality on her phone, no pictures, no text messages, no communications, nothing on her phone that showed that she was complicit in Maddie's abuse. And how do we know that he was not telling the truth, in my opinion? Because his follow-up to that definitive statement from that detective was, well, maybe I was imagining things. Maybe I was seeing things. That's not what somebody would say if they know what they saw. They'd say, well, I don't know what your tests tell you, but I could tell you I saw it with my own eyes. And they would describe the picture down to a T. But how, how terrible is your character that you could lie about CSAM. How terrible is your character that you could imagine, you could use your imagination to paint to a police officer a picture of a what? We don't know what age the video, the picture was from. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old girl in a compromising X E X. Position? You guys know I got to talk like that because of YouTube. In itself, that's a little sick to me. You're a little sick, especially when your son is accused of producing and possibly sharing. There's no evidence of that, but we know producing the production of CSAM material. And here's his father, the progenitor going to the police and making statements that he observed CSAM material on Jen's phone when we know that that's not true. Well, how do we know it's not true? Because the police told us it's not true. They told us it's not true. And what's the response of Chris Stearns? Oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe I'm seeing things. Um, you know, maybe I imagined it. Well, that's a really disgusting, degenerate imagination one would have to make such a claim. It's terrible. Then another thing that came out, he said, well, where did they get the money from? It's a question that a lot of YouTubers have been asking. Even I've asked that question before. Where did they get the money from? Stefan was buying all these different collectibles. These collectibles in and of themselves cost a lot of money. These were not cheap collectibles. This was an expensive hobby that he had. He always had money for that. Jen was getting $350 Botox treatments. She only canceled it because it was the day that her daughter went missing. Where did they get the money for that? Jen was driving a new car for the most part, relatively new car. Pretty sure she was paying a car note on that and insurance and paying her rent to her father. Maybe. We don't know what their real arrangement was. Where did the money come from? Well, he tried to state that maybe they were part of a criminal enterprise. I guess he alluded to the fact that maybe they were selling CSAM material of Maddie to support their lifestyle. Well, the, the detective put that to bed, too. He said, well, he said something interesting that maybe we can infer something from. Sorry, my nose is itching me. I don't know why. It's my allergies. End of the season allergies. I apologize. He said, and I'm reading into his words, and I hope, and maybe he meant something different. Maybe he was just being, in his own way, expressive with his words, but he didn't mean what it sounds like he said. But he said, no, Stefan was working alone. 
there's no evidence that Jen Soto participated in Stefan in what Stefan was doing. He was working alone. By saying working, we could infer that maybe there was a production side to the abuse where he was not just producing the material, but also selling the material. It's possible. It's very possible. It's very possible. But we need more evidence of that. It's possible. For me, I'm not too sold on the fact that there might be some distribution because the FBI would have already did a press conference saying that they were now working that angle of the case because that would be in the purview of the FBI or Homeland Security if there's some trafficking involved. Local police would not be dealing with the production, distribution, and sale of CSAM material over the internet. That is outside of their jurisdiction. That would be something that the FBI or Homeland Security would, would deal with. There's so much more other things that were said, but the crutch of the conversation, and I encourage you to go listen to it yourself. Apparently, the video is still up there on the Dockers channel. The detective came out and played out and said, listen, we don't have anything on Jen. Every single allegation that Chris Stearns threw against Jen, the detective rebuttaled and said there's no evidence of it. Now, somebody sent me an interesting email. They were very upset with me because of the statement I made at the end of the email. I listened to their theory. I graciously listened to their theory. And in the end, they decided to get snarky and upset with me. It is what it is. I can't control people's emotions. I try and be respectful and accommodating to everybody. That's how I was raised. That is the values that have been given to me by my mother and my ancestors that have come through her. And that is the man that I want to be, and that's the person I'm going to present myself to be to you folks. But I said to this individual, I said, listen, based off of the, well, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. Based off of the totality, the totality, the totality of the evidence that I have seen so far, ladies and gentlemen, based off of the totality of the evidence that I have seen so far, the fact that they have not arrested her yet, the fact that as I've told you guys in previous videos, at this point in September, with a crime that occurred in February, where all the evidence was pretty much right there for you to take. They have already evaluated all of the available evidence, electronic, digital, the whole nine, physical as well, based off of the fact of the evidence that they've reviewed, based off the fact that they've given her derivative use immunity, which is a limited type of immunity. But if you listen to the interrogation, the compelled interview that they did with Jen Soto, they said a number of key things. They said, number one, you have derivative use immunity for this interview. And we're also extending that to every interview you gave to not only law enforcement, but also to the news. In addition to any written statements you've given in the past, from this moment going backwards, they pretty much gave her almost transactional immunity, almost. It's not full immunity, but they gave her really close to full immunity. The fact that they did that meant that they didn't have much to work with then. And now in July, in July, which is two months ago, we now have a detective telling Chris Stearns, we have nothing on Jen. As far as she is concerned, Right now, she has not committed a crime. And then you throw a little sugar on the top that it was leaked to the news that they have nothing to criminally charge Jen with at this time. Every single month, pretty much after April, they've been saying, we have nothing on Jen. April, July, August, that's when I think August is when that leak came out that they weren't going to charge her. April is when they gave her derivative use immunity and also immunity for all of her past statements. 
July is when they spoke to Chris Stearns and told him we have nothing on Jen. They constantly keep saying the same thing. Well, guess what? As I've told you guys before, and I'm telling you now, once again, you want to have hope? Go ahead, have hope. There's nothing wrong with hope. Doesn't make you a bad person. Doesn't make you not intelligent. Doesn't make you unwilling to accept the truth. It's okay to have hope. It's okay. I'm telling you that. And I believe it. I'm not just telling you just to tell that. Have hope. But I'm telling you, unless they discover physical evidence, physical evidence that links Jen Soto to the abuse or the unaliving of Madeline Soto, she will not be charged. Stephen Stern's coming forward and saying, I didn't start it, which is a statement that the father said to the police that Stephen told him, you know, yeah, I did it, but I didn't, I didn't start it. What he, I, I, the scratch the I did it part. He didn't say that, but he said, I didn't start this. Number one, we don't know what that means. It could mean that Jen Soto started it. It could also mean what it means to a lot of pedophiles that they believe that the child came on to them. See, we want to automatically assume that he meant Jen Soto is the one who started it. I mean, based off of her actions, I mean, we would believe these things because she's just such a messed up person. But when you're dealing with pedos, it could also mean that the child started it. That she's the one who touched me first. She's the one who engaged with me first. She's the one that made me aroused first. That's what pedophiles constantly say. I've heard it a gajillion times in my career. They always blame the victim. They always want to believe that the victim wanted their abuse. It was not abuse. She enjoyed it. We were in a relationship. We were a couple. We were partners. That's what these pedos convince themselves of, I guess, so they can normalize the behavior and be able to sleep with themselves at night because we all have a uniform standard of morality. And these folks have to fight through that morality to justify the disgusting and despicable actions. We don't know what that means. It'd be nice if Stephen Stern decides he wants to come forward and tell us what that means. It'd also be nice if he had some evidence to back it up. And if he doesn't, then as this detective said, as the news said from their leaks, as we heard in the derivative use immunity compelled interview, and as Strategic Guys has been saying to you, Jen Soto will not be charged. Now, the person told me that if I believe that way, then I shouldn't talk about Jen anymore. I've always believed that Jen was a negligent mother. And do I believe that Jen Shoto should be charged for not properly taking care of Maddie and protecting her? Yeah, I believe so. But believing is something different than it happening. I still have hope that they would charge her with child abuse. That has nothing to do with her derivative abuse immunity. The child abuse is what she did. They have already developed that on their own. The fact that she was allowing this guy to sleep with the kid. His child abuse right there. But are they going to do it? No, because, you know, I guess they, they want to make her into a cooperating witness, ladies and gentlemen. And they don't want her hobbled with a misdemeanor or a low-level felony that would get knocked down to a misdemeanor anyway because she has no criminal record. You could charge her with the felony child abuse charge, but the fact that she has no criminal record, it pretty much has to be plea bargained down to a misdemeanor. And if you don't, she appeals it. The appeal court says, why are you treating Jen differently than you treated 10,000 other people who came before your court in this year alone? Why are you treating her differently? It's appeal worthy. The felony would never stick because she has no criminal record. So the district attorney, county attorney is like, why am I wasting my time? Why am I wasting my time charging her with that when I could much rather have her as a cooperating witness? And that's why he gave her derivative use immunity in the hopes that she would confess to something more and they'd have even more facts against Stephen Stearns. Unfortunately, she chose not to. Do I think she knows more? Absolutely, I do think she knows more. Can we prove it? No, we can't. Not right now, at least. So once again, 
Will Jen Soto be charged? Well, if we're judging off what information we have so far and what law enforcement has told us that they have, the answer is no. But unless there's some physical evidence out there that they have not evaluated yet, it's not going to happen. Even if Stephen Stearns writes a letter to his family that gets intercepted, then is released to us via FOIA request, and in that letter is saying, Jen Soda used to help me do these things to her. Remember when she said, um, I can't sleep with Maddie no more, it's too risky? That was because she was sleeping with Maddie too. Even if he says that, it's not enough to charge Jen Soto. They need physical evidence because you know what Stephen Stearns is? He's a dirty, lying, pedophile murderer. Who's going to believe him on the stand? And you want to know something else? The only way he'd be willing to cooperate is if they took the death penalty off the table. And guess what? They'd, they'd rather let Jen go free than Stefan walk away from the death penalty. Ladies and gentlemen, like and subscribe on the channel. Our Patreon is up and running. We got exclusive videos going on the Patreon right now. Go join the Patreon. But remember, you have to become a member of the Patreon. You can't just donate. You have to be a member of the Patreon if you want to have access to those, to those exclusive videos. So make sure that you join the channel as a member so you get the exclusive videos that I drop on YouTube. You join the channel as a Patreon subscriber. You get those exclusive videos as well. What I put on Patreon is usually way more raw than what I put on YouTube because YouTube has rules. And Patreon does not. Like, subscribe, join the channel. Strategic is out of here. Peace.